Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. So one of the things that I've talked about with clients recently and members of CFO On Demand, and one of the things that keeps coming up is... Well, it's really coming up as a concern from the entrepreneur that they're not making sales. That's really the concern. When you feel like you're not making enough sales, when it feels like the pipeline's drying up, when it feels like, hey, I just feel like I'm hustling way harder to make a sale than I used to. There's a couple of reasons for this. One is that your pipeline has dried up because you're, you've tapped out the audience that you have and acquiring new audience is definitely difficult. Or you've kind of gotten complacent with the fact that you have a big audience and you've been selling to them and everyone who is going to buy has bought from you at this point. And now you need to tap into new audience or you need to expand your niche or you need to expand your service offerings. That's one thing. The other thing is, and and this kind of goes along with that, is the pure misalignment between your offer and your audience slash your customer. And what I see constantly, and I've seen this several times, especially in the sort of the online consulting and coaching space is when people are, when when you're cultivating your offer based on what you want to be doing, right? So if you're creating an offer and you say, I want to offer group coaching, well, that doesn't mean your audience wants group coaching. There can be a misalignment between what you want to be doing and what your audience wants to buy from you. And it's not as simple as my audience will just buy whatever I sell. I mean, if you have a very loyal audience, that is wonderful, but you know, nine times out of 10, we're talking about they won't buy just because you're selling it. They need to have a problem that you're solving. They need to be able to see themselves in that problem. And what I see happen all the time is selling high ticket items to an audience that can't afford it. You know, I've had clients before who are in the coaching space that were selling products and services that were far outside of the price range of their clients. The clients had to buy or had to get loans in order to buy from the business. So it's really important that you understand the purchasing power of your core audience. You understand the, pr- the price point that they can afford. And you have to be committed to one of two things. You have to be either committed to the offer and willing to cultivate a new audience for that offer, knowing that you can solve a problem, but finding the right people you can solve it for. Or you need to be committed to your audience and you need to be able to say, hey, what my audience that I currently have needs right now is X. They are dealing with this problem and this is how I can uniquely solve that for them, even if it is not what I want to be doing. So there is a mix there of a compromise and you have to decide what you're willing to commit to because for some people, they're so sure about the problem they solve and they know they can do it brilliantly that the problem is that they're cultivating an audience that doesn't really want that, that they're, you know, they have an audience full of vanilla fans and they're trying to sell chocolate. It just doesn't work. But on the flip side, you could have, you know, an audience right to buy a certain offer, but you want to be doing something else. So you really have to be able to cater it one way or the other. So it's really important to understand where you are in that spectrum of being able to align those two things together. I find that when there's the lack of self-awareness of this, it can lead to so many different issues in your business that perpetuate because you're not performing market research. This is one way you can sort of combat that misalignment is you can do market research frequently, even when you're not releasing a new product. And this is something that I've been mindful of lately is even when you're not launching a new product, even when you are not really actively selling, right? You're not you know, digging through a pipeline. You should be doing almost constant market research by talking to your audience, talking to your ideal customers and saying, how can I make this better? How can I iterate it? What else can I do? And your current customers as well, asking your customers what their favorite and least favorite features of your product are, because that will tell you where they see the value and where you can lean into the value to make it even more valuable and even more of a high price point. So that's really important too. The more self-aware you are of where you stand in that spectrum of alignment to your audience, and the more you understand your audience, 
that is going to be the gateway to figuring out and hacking the sales system. It's not, you know, sales copy. I mean, that helps, but right, this is just the dressing on it. Is It's not the sales copy. It's not a killer landing page. It's not a social media post. It is ultimately at the core. Does your offer truly align with the audience you're selling it to? And if it does, fantastic. If, it, if you're struggling with sales, this could be your issue. And I'm going to challenge you that if you feel like this is happening to you, that you take a good hard look at really who's in your audience, who is really designed for your offer and try to bridge that gap somehow. That's really going to help you succeed in your sales and drive your revenue, not to mention really give you a ton of clarity in terms of what direction to go and strategically in your business to grow. I want to tell you about an entrepreneur that I know who was struggling to cross beyond 300,000 in revenue. And it felt like she was always hitting this ceiling and couldn't break free from it. She knew she had to make more, but also had to hire more people. And she was way too scared to hire and spend all her money investing in that team. Almost everybody struggles with these types of decisions, but not everybody has access to a fractional CFO to create the plan and the projections that show the path to your next stage of business. I understand that a fractional CFO can be an intimidating investment for some, which is why we offer one-on-one intensives called power sessions. These sessions are two mornings in a row with me focused on just you and your business and getting you the tailored advice that you need to reach a goal. Whether it's creating your goals and projections for the year, forecasting your cash flow, or developing a compensation plan for your team, a CFO Power Session can help you get clarity on those burning questions holding you back from making the decisions that you need to make. Spots are limited as I typically take on only two per month. So click the link in the show notes now to schedule a free call with me and learn more. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.